let, let's set up a situation and say that maybe a child was in the uh, sandbox and they'd get sand in somebody's eyes because they were throwing the sand around. First thing you do is you comfort the child. You attend to the child who was injured or you attend to the offended party. And you do it in front of the child who was the perpetrator in this event. Um, and you, you want that child to see that when someone's hurt, the very first thing that happens is we try to do something to make that situation better. We also say to the other child, you were excited with the sand. When you threw it up in the air, it got into Fred's eyes. Um, that really, that hurt him or that made him unhappy. So that's where you're now linking the, the child who carried out the action with, to the child who's experiencing uh, what the, the result. It's a good idea then to have the child who carried out the, the problem behavior. Uh, and right now intent is not what's so important. It's the matter that this has happened. That you encourage that child to make restitution in some way. One of the things that you're doing when you're promoting empathy and some restitution is you're, you're readjusting the lens through which everyone else is seeing the perpetrator's behavior and you're adjusting the perpetrator's lens too. You're helping the perpetrator to find a way to not simply be the aggressor, but in fact to have done something constructive or proactive. Managing incidents in which one child has clearly offended another is a common classroom occurrence in early childhood programs. The children, those directly involved and others, will carefully watch how their teachers respond. Our instincts as adults are to encourage a child to apologize, to acknowledge his fault, and to demonstrate that he knows what he did wrong. But for a young child, saying he's sorry may have no meaning. Depending on the child's developmental level and also on the child's like individual needs, um, it's about getting to that point where you don't force them to apologize, but to get them to understand like in little in tiny increments, like what is appropriate and why, why, why would you act that way and understanding like the nuances in between those, like what you want them to achieve and also what the child realistically can do. And I think that in itself is, 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 a, is a good outcome as opposed to having apologetic children who don't really understand why they're apologizing for something. Children as young as three are able to tell genuine sorry versus not. So when we make a child walk up to another child and say, sorry, everybody knows it's not real. Everybody knows. It is not empathic, it is not constructive, it is not real. The victim knows, and that isn't a good place for the victim to be. Because now they have the problem, this person said sorry, supposedly the incident is, in, is over, but in fact it is not. That's going to simmer away. The perpetrator has learned, well, the way I get out of these kinds of behaviors is I simply, or these kinds of situations, all I have to do is say sorry. I have actually watched children in the act of going to clobber somebody or grab something and saying sorry while they're doing it. So that is not a good strategy. It might make the adult feel better, but neither the victim nor the perpetrator have learned the lesson of empathy and more positive behavior. For an apology to have meaning, a child has to understand how his behavior affects others. This is how children develop empathy and healthy relationship skills. Young children make amends through actions, by doing something to show they are sorry and trying to make things right again. Some children are developmentally ready to be guided through this process in the moment. Simple prompts often work, such as, how could you help make things better? Or how could you show your friend you're sorry? Other children may need time to compose themselves, calm down, and reflect before they are able to work with you to find a way to make things better. You know, it might be five minutes later that child's kind of forgotten about it and 
emotionally more, you know, playing ready to go. And just to take a quiet moment with that child and talk about, you know, I know you didn't want to talk about it, but so-and-so, you know, it was hurt or hurt their feelings and talk with them about it. So you don't have to make them afraid that they're going to, like, get in trouble later or anything. But I think the, the really good teacher knows you probably don't run after them, but yet you deal with it when that child's uh, maybe a little more ready to deal with it. I think you have to say this is too hard for you to talk about right now. I'm going to check in with you later and that you have to actually remember to check in. You know, it's like, I see this is just too hard right now. Maybe you're too mad or too sad, but you've got to then go to that kid and say, you know, what, you know, can we talk about this now? You may not, you know, the first 17 times you do that, that child may never agree to talk about it. They have to know that you're going to come back that you're interested. I mean, I think that's the thing of, of all the new things, is that if it, something doesn't work the first or second time you do it, you say, see, I told you that didn't work. And it's like, it's not like that. It takes time. You're building a relationship with somebody who clearly doesn't feel safe in expressing feelings. And so that's not an overnight thing. In a caring learning community, making amends is the first step taken by a child who may have caused a problem. But it's also important that teachers help the other children, those directly affected and those who witnessed the incident, to accept the child back into classroom activities. So I think we need to really look at how we help a child re-enter a situation. Um, and we, again, want to create opportunities for that child to come back in, but, not, but they're not going to necessarily be able to deal with what just happened at that moment. They need to calm down, and they need to put themselves back together. And then they need to be welcomed, and I really mean welcome, they need to be welcomed back into the community because there was a little bit of fabric that got frayed there um, and invited to play. But you, you need to be able, I think, to structure those situations for children so they can learn them. Um, and so I think the most important things are giving a child space, welcoming a child back, and then talking with the child afterwards, you know, about how can they make amends in, in a genuine way. And um, you can then share you know, how do you think that made so-and-so feel? But if you ask a child that in the heat of the moment, they're going to be angry. And even if they knew how the other child felt, they might not really care. Um, so I think we have to be realistic about the timing at which we try and teach these lessons, because sometimes children, just like us, are more receptive to learning them than others. Classrooms in which conflicts are consistently and fairly resolved are havens of safety for young children. They develop trust in their teachers and come to believe that they can work together to solve their problems. That when kids feel like they can come to the teacher if they have a problem, that if they lose it and hurt another child, the teacher is not going to punish them, but is going to take a proactive attitude to help the child and, and the other both learn in the situation. The teacher isn't going to say, now you go say you're sorry, but say, you know, I think uh, his feelings got hurt is a way you can help him feel better. That when teachers help kids meet those basic safety needs um, uh, of belonging and of expressing, towards expressing strong emotions in non-hurting ways, then those kids take off. Then they work on um, solving problems create, creatively. They, they begin to show friendly, supportive uh, gestures towards others. They, they begin to do perspective taking um, uh, to be inclusive to, their, to the kids, their classmates.